Okay, so now that we have our data entered into the graphing calculator, we're going to go ahead and create a histogram using that data. Um, by coincidence here, it does turn out that um, originally in the first video I said that we're going to go ahead and we won't worry about the number of classes. You'll notice that the graphing calculator will actually in this set of data, it determines that seven is the most appropriate set of classes, number of classes, excuse me, and it splits it up that way. So here we go. We have our set of data entered in the calculator, and now we're ready to create a histogram um, from a set of data. From there, then, we will then quickly make another video where we make a frequency polygon and an ogive to kind of compare and to look at. Okay, number one here says enter the data into L1. Well, we already did that with the first video. Um, we have L1, we have our data listed there. Number two says that they want to make sure our window values are appropriate for the histogram. I want to make this quick and short. We're going to take this step and we're going to put it down here below number seven. And when we do that, we're actually going to use the zoom key. We're going to press the zoom. And then once inside the zoom, we will then press um, number nine, stat plot. I'm sorry, zoom stat, excuse me. Zoom stat. So we'll come back to that in a minute. So let's go back up to number two. We said so we're going to skip that step, and we're going to go down to number three. Press second, stat plot, and enter. So we're going to come here, we're going to press second. That gives us that up arrow in the top right hand corner. That means now we're looking to be able to hit any of the words that are written in blue here. On top of every key, you'll notice there's blue handwriting, or blue writing, excuse me. That means we're going to choose a, a different command for that keystroke. Stat plot is located right here, the top left hand corner of the keyboard. Um, it's on the Y equals button. That takes us into a screen like this. By pressing enter, what's going to happen is we're actually going to choose stat plot number one. Okay. Number four, press enter to turn the plot on. Well, you'll notice my plot is already turned on. So just to kind of show you what it looks like when it's turned off, I'm going to use my side arrow to go to off, press enter. Now you'll notice off is highlighted dark black, whereas on is not. So I'm going to turn it back on, so I press arrow over, enter. Number five, move the cursor to the histogram symbol and press enter if necessary. Okay, so now I'm going to go down one spot because I have basically a couple different commands. I have the on off, I have the type of graph, I have where my lists are coming from, and I have the type of mark in this case for this type of data plot. So I'm going to press the down arrow to go to type. As I'm going across these, I'm going to go ahead and tell you what they each mean. Um, every time we use it, I'll redefine these and you'll remember by the end of class possibly. Or it might take you several years like it did me. First one, scatter plot. Second one is going to be your frequency um, distribution. I'm sorry, frequency polygon. Third one is a histogram. This guy down here is called a box plot. We'll get to that in the next test section. Um, that's a box plot with an outlier. That's a box plot or whisker graph. And the last one is your cumulative frequency polygon, or better known as the ogive. So we're going to go back using our side-to-side -side arrows to the histogram. Press enter. Number five is complete. Number six, make sure that your X list is L1. Well, for a more advanced user, I can actually change that to a different list. We don't need to worry about that right now. We put our information in L1. That's where we want it to come from. So that's where we're telling it to look. Frequency, I'm not going to say anything about this, but number seven, just make sure your frequency is on one. Should be if you have default settings. So now we're done with number seven, and now we're going to slide in my thing here, my little shortcut. We could definitely go to the window key. You know, I'll show you what it looks like. We can go to window, and we can look here, and this is saying, okay, tell me your X minimum. Tell me your X maximum. And it's asking you to go through and put that information in. But the calculator has this really cool button, the zoom button. Well, let's go ahead and press the zoom button now. The zoom button takes you into a screen like this. These are like little default settings that will get your, your window to where you want it to be. If we go down to number 9, number 9 is called zoom stat. And what zoom stat does is it takes the set of data that you're looking at 
and it defines your window based upon that set of data. It does all the work for you. And that's what we want. That's why we're using this tool. This is a tool to help us solve the problems. It, it helps us solve them, but we have to still understand what the data is telling us. So this just help, this cuts out all the work so we can just focus on what this means. All right, so here we go. We're going to choose number nine, press enter, and there we have it. So we've done number eight and with the zoom. And now we're ready for number nine, and this is where we get to interpret our data. And if just for one moment, if I can go back to the actual question, you'll remember that in here it says discuss the shape of the distribution and what proportion of the schools have 180 or more faculty. So let's focus on the shape of the distribution. Well, in this case right here, um, you know, we can look at this a couple different ways, but I guess the thing that I would say to everybody is look at Where is your data mainly grouped? And, and think about, you know, we have these different types. On page 59 in your textbook, you have these different displays of data that give you different possible combinations or different views of the data. And in my personal opinion right here, this is going to be what we call a right skewed um, graphical display. So let me pull this over here so you can kind of see why I'm calling it right skewed. All right, let me move that down just a little bit. Oops. And so why I would call this right skewed is because if I look at this, if I was to put a curve on this, this data kind of comes up, all the data is kind of down here in this section, and then it kind of comes immediately down and just stays real low. So it's kind of like these two pieces of data out here are kind of not outliers, but they kind of stand out there by themselves. And so most of our data is grouped right here. And so in this case here, we would more than likely call this right skewed because of the fact that we have these couple pieces of data to the right that skew our other data that's here in, the, in this location. Okay, so now we've discussed the, what that means. All right, so now let's go to, to what proportion of the school has 180 or more faculty. All right, so that takes us back to, when we come back to the screen, it takes us back to number nine. And on number nine, they want us to press the trace key. So when I press the trace key, what that does for me is it, tells, it says in this class right here, this first bar of the histogram, and, and that's why it's important to listen to the lecture video because he kind of explains more of this information. But it says in the first one, our lower class limit is 70, our upper class limit is 123, and there are six items in the set. This one says, second class, 123 to 176, there's 10 items in that class. I just keep using my side-to-side -side arrow to keep cruising across, cruising across. Now, this is where the information is interesting. Because the question that we're actually wanting to talk about says, what proportion of the school schools have 180 or more faculty? Well, according to our display right here, if we look at this at this point, this is 176. And that means that our midpoint of this particular um, class is probably a little bit more than 180. So, at, and let me just drag this across. It'll be easier to talk about. Okay, it's kind of draw on top of it. So now, like, I'm looking at this right here, and I'm saying, okay, my midpoint is probably, you know, somewhere like 190-ish. You know, somewhere around there. I'm not 100% sure. I've calculated it. But their questions talk about 180. So. What they're saying now is we have essentially this portion of our data which is above. And from this display, I can say that's not a very large proportion. A majority of our portion of our information or our data occurs from this location down. We have six items here, ten items there, ten items there. Here we have one item and one item. And that's not very much information. So there's not much data that happens that is greater than 180. There's some, but not a ton. That's our discussion piece. That's how we can interpret the data. So with that said, what we've done now is we've taken a set of data and we've created a histogram so that we can interpret the data, see where the data is grouped, see the behaviors of the data, see how the data organizes itself into, um, into a graphical display.